Almost everything we use depends on silicon semiconductors called chips. From your iPhones, your fridge, your air filter. The most advanced supercomputers, the most basic toaster ovens. What's turning on your indicators, what's turning on your radio in your car, that's a chip. Today, about a trillion chips are made a year, or 128 for every person on the planet. And China's government is lending the industry the same strategic importance it gave to its atomic bomb program. It's arguably a lot more important because you are talking about China becoming uh, self-reliant on the technology that powers all of uh, mankind's uh, future scientific advances. The key semiconductor is the advanced logic chip. It's the most expensive and complex piece of silicon that gives computers and smartphones their intelligence. This is the microprocessors designed by Apple, designed by Qualcomm, are made by only a, a very few companies and they're made on the very, very most advanced manufacturing. Right now, there's one company that's crucial when it comes to making advanced logic chips. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. And it is a company that makes customized chips for a lot of global tech companies, including uh, Apple and NVIDIA and MediaTek. So when TSMC has a shortage, entire industries shut down. And this dependency on Taiwan worries Western countries. The other concern that has been voiced by others is the fact that China claims Taiwan, which is a democratically self-governing island. China has always said it wants to take over uh, Taiwan by force if necessary. But China's also worried, since they too rely on Taiwan, which has strong ties to the US for their chip imports. The result of all this? Multi-billion dollar plans by multiple countries in a race to dominate the mother of all cutting edge technologies. The transistors which give chips their functionality are small, very small. The way to measure size in the chip industry is in nanometers. These are billions of a meter. The current state of the art is five nanometers. They are smaller than a virus. Very soon we're going to get to the point where these layers of materials that we use to build up a transistor on a chip are going to be an atom thick. Once we get to that point, we can't make them any smaller. The smaller transistors are, the more you can fit into a chip, which in turn will offer more computing power. But making these chips has gotten so incredibly complicated and expensive that it's difficult to keep up. That's why the number of manufacturers at the industry's cutting edge has fallen from over 25 in 2000 to just three. There are fewer and fewer companies actually producing leading edge silicon for a very simple reason. You need 15, 20 billion dollars to build just one semiconductor factory, and that factory is obsolete within five years. That means you need to be running that plant 24-7. It needs to be producing hundreds of millions of devices a year, and those devices need to be selling at a very high premium, otherwise you're losing money. And there are really only a few companies that understand the brutal you know, economics of the industry and that they can play that game and win. But now the American champion Intel has shown signs of a slowdown. Although it's dominated the industry for the last 30 years, it's starting to fall behind in manufacturing and has announced that, like everyone else, it may start outsourcing some of its work to TSMC. What's really changed, though, over the last decade is that you've had what's called the birth and the growth of foundries. These are companies that specialize only in manufacturing and take designs from other companies and make them with the best process technology. In the past, they couldn't really keep up with Intel, but now, particularly TSMC and, and to a secondary extent, Samsung have actually got ahead. The net result of that is that a company like Qualcomm, a company like Apple can design a processor, send that design around the world electronically and have that 
design made into a piece of silicon on a more advanced process. By volume, South Korea's Samsung actually makes more chips than any other manufacturer. But the company mainly focuses on memory chips rather than the custom-made logic chips that companies depend on TSMC for. Everybody wants TSMC to do their best stuff because TSMC are better at it. It's as simple as that. The economics and the technology, they've won. Above 30% of the most advanced logic is done in those factories in Shinchu by TSMC engineers. Both Samsung and Intel have recently announced multi-billion dollar investments in the foundry business, although they won't be a threat to TSMC for years to come. But whether it's South Korea, the United States or Taiwan, China's relationship with all three is less than ideal. Not to mention a lot of the equipment and software provided to TSMC and Samsung to manufacture chips is made by US companies. There are only a select few companies that can make these machines that scrape off these fine patterns with ultra UV lasers. You know, this is science fiction level technology. Applied materials here in California, KLA 10 core, Lots of these companies that you've never heard of are absolutely crucial in the supply chain in making these machines that then translate into these multi-billion dollar factories that make chips. And the US has leveraged its position to enact sanctions on China, banning the country from using US technology out of security concerns. So we're all familiar with the example of Huawei. Uh, whose smartphone business has basically been essentially obliterated by U.S. sanctions. Whether it's software, whether it's actual chip components, uh, materials that go into chips, or equipment that you use to fabricate chips, uh, all of that is technically banned. The American tech embargo began as an effort against Huawei over national security. But bans and restrictions now affect at least 60 firms. These include SMIC, China's chip champion, which has been put on a blacklist. At the end of 2020, TSMC's sales to Chinese clients dropped by roughly 70%. And for the first time ever, Huawei reported a drop in revenue. I, I think China's rise as a superpower in technology is regarded as a threat to very fundamental American interests. They are military foes. And the last thing Washington wants is, is also to see a technological foe with the wherewithal or the capabilities to wage a technological warfare on the United States. But US sanctions might not be such a simple solution. China is the largest purchaser of chips in the world, as well as a manufacturer of less sophisticated chips for companies like Qualcomm and other American companies. Bear in mind that a lot of American businesses rely on China for growth. So there is very strong pushback from the private sector to allow the flow of American technology to China to resume. But if you look at the overall picture, I think the Biden administration shares the Trump administration's objectives in curtailing uh, China's rise as a technological power, and that's because that would have ramifications for really long-term strategic goals. We're investing aggressively in areas like semiconductors and batteries. That's what they're doing and others. So must we. But cutting China out completely isn't an option since much of the world depends on China to manufacture most of their electronics, like iPhones. A chip designed, say, by Apple in Cupertino in California will be made in Taiwan, then packaged into something that's going to end up in an iPhone in the Philippines. That chip then makes its way to China, where it gets plugged into an iPhone. That iPhone then gets on a plane and gets sold in Europe or maybe even comes back to Cupertino and gets sold in the Apple store. So the semiconductor supply chain is arguably one of the most complex and widely 
geographically spread supply chains in the world. From Beijing's perspective, US sanctions are a way to keep China at the bottom end of the supply chain, forever stuck as a low-tier manufacturing hub. That's why China is determined to become self-sufficient and is shifting into its highest gear. During its annual NPC meeting in 2021, President Xi Jinping pledged $1.4 trillion to accelerate their tech industry and become totally independent from foreign technology. One of the announcements that we've seen come out since the NPC has been uh, SMIC, China's top chip maker, signing an agreement to build a $2.5 billion semiconductor foundry or manufacturing plant with Shenzhen's government. And I think you'll see more of those private-public partnerships where a private giant or entity such as SMIC uh, drives more efficient private capital into uh, national objectives. SMIC, or Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, is China's largest foundry. Although it's still decades behind Taiwan's TSMC, China has shown its ability to throw money and human resources at the development of mega projects. But the chip industry isn't quite the same thing. There have been numerous failures um, in terms of China's uh, domestic chip development effort. Uh, SMIC is an example of a success, but there have been plenty more that have fallen by the wayside. Literally hundreds of much smaller corporations that you and I have never heard of um, that raised capital but ultimately failed to deliver on its goals. TSMC has shown it takes much more than capital and human resources. It takes time. So TSMC was founded in uh, 1987 and it has spent more than uh, 30 years in developing and creating its own uh, manufacturing uh, technology. It is just not very likely that you can uh, create a uh, comprehensive semiconductor ecosystem overnight. And unlike the US or China, Taiwan's economy is largely built around semiconductors. TSMC is located in the small town of Xinchu, which hosts a whole ecosystem of other well-established chip manufacturing and packaging companies. And the industry also attracts Taiwan's best talent. One of Taiwan's best paying uh, industry is the uh, semiconductor industry. So with that incentive, a lot of school children would see the electrical engineering or anything that's related to the semiconductor manufacturing as their top choice when they uh, decide on uh, which uh, university departments they want to go to. So in the US, you have students choosing to study uh, computer science or other subjects that would be more related to the skills that big tech companies like Google or uh, Amazon require. Likewise, in China, students are much more likely to be attracted by companies like Tencent, Baidu and Alibaba, or make their own app. One of the things that Chinese officials in recent years have been stressing, it's fine to build the world's best food delivery app, but at the same time you need also to be able to attract talent into areas such as AI, quantum computing, basic scientific developments, uh, what we call the hard sciences or hard tech. To counter the lack of talent in the field, China's been recruiting talent from abroad, which has been controversial in Taiwan and the US, considering China's history of taking intellectual property. China has been hiring aggressively from Taiwan over the past few years. And what the U.S. may be concerned is these people may bring their know-how to China and help China build up a semiconductor industry more swiftly and more effectively. And there is actually a well-known IP theft case. The U.S. memory maker Micron has sued Taiwan's UMC and a number of engineers. Micron alleged that some of these engineers formerly has some know-how from Micron to help UMC's Chinese partner to build up their memory chips in China. 
But all these resources and talent still don't necessarily equal success. To make a profit, companies like TSMC have a huge amount of orders from a diverse number of clients, and that also takes years to build up. So if Taiwan was suddenly cut off by a China invasion, for example, there is no TSMC replacement. Let's say if uh, Apple decides to find another partner, it will take years for them to get this uh, other chip maker to be ready, if at all. So without TSMC, you will not be able to have chips in your iPhones, and you will not have chips for your uh, F-35 fighter jets that the US flies. So it will be a very different world we are talking about without TSMC in it. This choke point came to light during the pandemic when a chip shortage cost the auto industry billions of dollars. Yeah, the pandemic has been a fascinating story and arguably a, 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 a turning point moment for the semiconductor industry. Dial the clock back a, a year ago to early 2020 and the forecasts were dire. Economic activity around the world in the pandemic was, was going to come crashing down and that was going to kill demand for semiconductors. What really happened though was as we were locked in, in our homes, studying and working from home, we felt an increasing need for the electronic services, for the electronic devices that had been around us all the time, but we felt a much more intense need for them. And that had a knock-on huge effect in creating demand for semiconductors. Roll the clock forward to where we are now, demand has come surging back. And it's come surging back in sectors where it really wasn't expected to. For example, the automotive industry, which thought that essentially the world was ending, that there was no, no demand for cars and they were gonna to have to shut plants down having to shut plants down because they can't get enough chips. This prompted the US to sign deals with TSMC and Samsung to build factories on their own turf. If we see what's being billed as a, an electronic Cold War fully materialize, that China goes its own way in technology, that Europe and the US go in another direction, then perhaps it makes increasingly more economic sense to have facilities here The biggest economic choke point of the 20th century may have been oil passing through the Strait of Hormuz, but now it's microscopic silicon transistors manufactured in Taiwan. But while the US and China are fighting for control of the technology, they still depend on each other for the most part. The trade war really is a case of be careful what you wish for. The chip industry brought attention to itself and lobbied for action against China for years on IP protection. Now that it's happened, they're not happy with the situation. Why are they not happy with that situation? Because they depend upon the Chinese market. It's the fastest growing, biggest market. They need to be able to sell chips into China. Right now, China needs them. China needs what they're producing. Massive wake up call for China, massive call to them to show that they need to be independent. The worst case scenario for the US is that China makes that leap, that this next five year plan or the five year plan after that finally hits home. Chinese chip manufacturers emerge and become competitive to Intel, to Nvidia, to Broadcom, to what Apple can produce inside. The worst case scenario, at least from a globalist's point of view, is bipolarization of the world, where you have US and China and countries around the world lining up behind one or the other. It's not good for a lot of things, just starting simply with global trade. But if I may be allowed to wax lyrical for a second, it ain't good for the advancement of humankind. <laughs>